Now we're going to kick off on some of the key, uh, the, the core leading indicators and, and things that have happened so far this quarter and how are things going to really continue over the next few months. So when we start looking at what is happening here, you know, and, and we're going to look at other regional feds. The reason why we like to look at so many different data points is because you might get an outlier, good and bad. And you want to understand it's like, okay, well, is this really a pivot change? Is this more of something that happened locally specific? And that's when you start looking at the level of business activity in Dallas, Philly, and Empire. And and here you can see so far on the regional Fed index, Empire is the outlier to the upside. Dallas and Philly have turned lower. We're going to show you Richmond, Kansas City. All of them have moved in the wrong direction in comparison. Even Chicago, there's another one, versus Empire. So again, there's more along the lines of there's a bounce, but it's not something that is happening around the country. It could have been what was what was uh, looked at you know the area that was being discussed and nuts to some of those important pieces so when you look at the april philly fed services index was it, it previously was a negative 12.8 came at negative 22.8 so again wrong direction moving back to the lows that we saw in 2020 and it's the lowest level going back to 2011. so there's pressure. New order, sales, work week, all deteriorated. Price, uh, prices paid fell, but prices received moved slightly higher. So prices, so just again, there's there's some of that stickiness in inflation, even as things deteriorated further on the services front. Again, services, as we showed in segment one, 71% of the U.S. economy. Philly is obviously a bigger piece of that. When you think about the geog geographical region, you're essentially going from uh, Pennsylvania across, uh, you know, touching into Ohio, coming straight down, going across to West Virginia and back up. And you've essentially kind of hit into where you're looking at. And it's not great. I, and it covers a decent amount of manufacturing as well as a, a fairly sizable in, uh, amount of um uh, uh, sir, uh, individuals. So again, you're getting a, a fairly good snapshot of where things are in general. So then when you look at the Chicago Fed act, act, uh, activity, March National uh, Activity Index came at a negative 0.19 versus the estimate of negative 0.2. So production-related indicators contributed negative 0.08, while employment-related indicators contributed a slight positive, which, again, you're kind of getting some of this, this sideways. It's And that's what we're starting to see when we saw it in some of the other pieces. But it's still negative. You're still contracting. So you're still seeing how March kind of fin how March finished out. And based on leading indicators, as we've shown, based on new orders, all of these key pieces, it does it's not getting better. Uh, manufacturing uh, PMI inputs for, it, it's important to look at, input prices bounced. Global U.S. services, price changes went up. So April, you had an increase in prices. Again, none of this is showing a reduction in inflation. We've talked about monetary policy. We can talk to or about blue in the face. But input prices, prices changed for manufacturing services, bounced. They're in expansion. Now they're expanding at a faster pace than previously, not something that happens when you have deflation. Philly versus Empire, the widest gap on record between Philly and Empire as former continued to sink in April while the later soared. Philly Fed Manufacturing Index, ISM Manufacturing PMI, kind of showing you the direction. And they're, as you can see, they're fairly close to each other where Empire is capturing a bit more on the services front, a bit more on the uh, on um, the banking side. So again, we think that the uh, that Empire was a bit more of an outlier here. Philly Fed non manufacturing activity negative, but also non manufacturing sales. And this is the the key point because one of the things that we've been talking about again, coming back to the consumer, was that it's it, it slowed, but it was still positive. Now we're starting to finally get a little bit of a crack. Again, it's only one data point. We could bounce, but when you layer that in with savings, uh, you know, tax returns coming back, you know, where where things are, there's going to be a bit of a mix. But credit cards are a huge overhang. Interest rates are an overhang. This we think is going to be a, a leading index and and showing you where things are going. 
Now let's look at Richmond. Manufacturing index fell to negative 10 versus the estimate of negative 5, and prior was negative, uh, negative 8, prior was negative 5. So again, moving to the downside. New orders fell further into contraction. Again, a leading indicator for what's going to happen because you're looking at April. So now what does that mean? That means that April was weaker and then lead new orders, which again, going into Q2, is in further into contraction. Again, looking forward, lead times moved up a bit. Uh, CapEx dipped into contraction. CapEx fell. So remember, companies take that money to invest and that money is now coming down but wages are still expanding. So there's that, <laughs> that back and forth with wages are still expanding. So that's still a cost. We saw prices go up. We see all of these different pieces. So then you, you break it down and you can, can say, okay, well, maybe it's just Richmond. Well, let's turn to Dallas. Wage benefits uh, component of Dallas Manufacturing Index continued to rebound in April, but the work week fell. So the work week fell, but Again, wages and benefits went up. That is not, that is an inflationary data point because people have to you know pay their employees. They have to give that money to to them to to live. So that's where you start looking at. It. It's like okay, well, none of this is looking great for expansion in Q2. None of this is also pointing to like the Richmond Fed going from an estimate of negative eight to negative thirty, like. It's just you're staying in contraction. You're not getting much worse. You're not getting any better. You're just kind of here. And the leading indexes are starting to, cr to crumble a bit. You know, you saw new orders control, uh, contract further. But then you start looking at some of the different gaps. Skills gap erased uh, for, uh, for service sector. However, the gap worsened for manufacturing. So that gap in employment is also going to keep uh, wages elevated because you have to pay the better people to come in and work for you. April Dallas Fed manufacturing index fell to negative 23.4 versus the estimate of ne negative 11. In March, it was negative 15.7. New orders improved, but still contracting. Outlook worsened. Hours work dipped. Shipments improved. Employment ticked slightly lower. So some of the key pieces you actually had, again, leading indicator, new orders improved, but again, still contracting. So it's not as bad as it was. Again, kind of that leveling off in a contract in a contracting level, leading to more of these pressure points. Kansas City, April manufacturing index down to negative 10 versus negative two uh, in the previous one was zero. In uh, new orders, production, export shipments all sank into contraction. Again, new orders contracting. Negative indicator for the future. Prices paid take slightly higher. So you actually had prices paid go up. Again, that's inflation. That is showing you what's coming. And that is, is pointing to stuff getting slower, but other things going back up. Philly Fed uh, manufacturing new orders, uh, just kind of putting it into perspective across these different areas. Negative 22.7 bounced, but still contracting. Fed manufacturing CapEx plans, firmly negative, and that's something that we don't see bouncing either. Dallas Manufacturing Index, as you can see where, in terms of where it is on the negative side, and then, but it's just, as you can see, it's just bouncing along. And for those that have been watching us, you know, we said it was, it was gonna fall down and then just kind of go sideways. Eventually it was gonna take another little leg down, but you're, you're just gonna stay in this contracting point which is going to put that pressure there. Capital goods orders uh, in, term, in real terms, because it's important to look at what is happening, because U.S. durable goods orders were, uh, came in above estimates, were expected at 0.7, came in at, negative, uh, at, po at positive 3.2%, <clears throat> but real capital goods orders are declining. And, and that's the inflation piece that we like to talk about, where technically, on a value basis, it's higher, but on a volume basis, it's lower and falling. And again, that's a pressure point that we've been talking about. Conference board, consumer confidence, just again, putting this into perspective. That's why when you start looking at consumer expectations, consumer confidence, you're getting that slowdown in general because you're watching this. You're like, all right, well, I hear from people who quote year over year inflation, things are getting better. But then you obviously we showed you some of this data. Prices aren't going down. You know, then you look at the month over month, prices aren't going down. And you're so people are looking at this and like, well, if they keep at this level for the next six months, 
I mean, this is going to become an even bigger pain point, which is why you're starting to see it here. Again, trying to look towards the future, changing quarterly visits across selected industries. Or, you know, overall retail down 4.2%, grocery stores down 4.3%, superstores is down 4.1%, malls down 3.1%. Discount dollar stores up slightly. So fitness is, you still had some lockdowns in Q1 of 22. So fitness is, is tough, you know, so, but, and, and, and that's where, you know, small number against a small number is still going to give you a bigger percentage. Where here, the, 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 you're seeing some of that pivot going into some of these areas with uh, discount stores. And as we said, there were still some lockdowns. So you even have a little bit of an easier comp and lockdowns is relatively speaking because some people did their own thing. But the, the again, the pressure is on the consumer and here's what you're looking at. Then you take it to the next level after tax wages and salaries growth based on Bank of America, aggregate, aggregate consumer deposit data is falling. So again, you have prices going up, you have wages and salaries falling, and yet you have more leading indicators popping up. And then when you look at higher income households are seeing the fastest slowdown in wage growth, because typically that's, that's where uh, if you want to make a big difference to your bottom line or to try to cut cost, you know, are you going to fire the guy that has, is making $15 an hour, or are you going to fire the guy making $175,000 an hour? And that's again, where you're going to see these different pieces and that, so this is typically what you see at the very beginning. Then you see that balance out first because then it's only so deep you can cut before, you know, things seize up. So even on this level, when, and I think it's important because average credit card utilization rates by household income is down. So people are using their credit cards less, which again, leading into less spending, but delinquency rates are up and they're above where they were pre-COVID. And now you're, you, can, you can see the rate of change is accelerating and coming fairly close to where it was as we progressed into 2009. And, and that's when you start looking at 2007 into this pivot and, and we see this growing rapidly because of the interest rates that are being charged. Now, when you start looking at how people are moving about and excuse me, how people are, are changing the way they, um, they live, which of the following reasons are for your move, better quality of life, that's going to continue to be the case, and then new home share of inventories continues to climb, and that's going to continue as, again, we go from more uh, homes that are under construction to being completed. All the while, when you look at some of the flash uh, indexes, so back to expansion for the uh, global PMI, manufacturing came in at 50.4 in April versus 49. Uh, the estimate of 49 services came in at 53.7 versus the estimate of 51.5. So again, you're starting to see this is showing you the flash, but the Fed, the the you know the regional Feds is telling a different story. But this is important to watch because manufacturing bounced, still slight expansion, but not very much. So that's where we're seeing some of these shifts. S&P Global U.S. Manufacturing PMI has been rising for the last four months. So again, to come to this back and forth, uh, U.S. services starting to kind of come back to life. But all of this also kind of points to, well, there's, that's not inflate, that's not deflationary. And, and that's where we have to balance what is the regional Fed saying versus what is happening here. And these are all obviously good, but some of, one of the bigger issues is on the regional front. And the regional front is showing that there is some cracks there that sometimes takes time to work through to the global, uh, the, the, the national level. But I think it gives you a kind of a bit more of an insight into where things will go. The labor market will, will loosen. So when we start looking at the euro area and some of these different shifts, you want to look at, okay, well, what's happening in the euro area? Is it something that, is it just in the U.S.? Is it happening there as well? And the number of employees, credit flows, again, are coming down. Number of employees, bank lending standards getting worse. But then you look at the U.S., real estate vulnerable to U.S. downturn. You know, commercial building activity versus economic cycle. So both sides are showing you a drop. And it's, it's, uh, it's going to be unrealistic to think that there won't be this drop. And there's, it's not like, oh, Europe's in a better situation. They're both going to see some of these key pressure points. 
MBA purchase um, applications versus existing home sales. So essentially, the MBA purchases are telling you something that's coming. You know, you're starting to see some of these pressure points, but then the federal home loan bank advances are increasing. So you're starting to see some of this, like the, what the federal home loans are trying to, to, to kind of solidify. And it's this last hurrah and trying to, 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 to supplement. But we see some of these pressure points coming when you look at U, U.S. housing activity. And one of the things that we've said is, again, nothing dies in a straight line. You always get a bounce. You saw it in 06 as we go in, went into 08. It's still well below trend line, and it's just not. It's not going to con- just drop straight to, you know, seventy. It's gonna. It's gonna drop. It's then gonna bounce around. Then it's gonna drop again. Then it's gonna bounce around, and eventually it'll start to pivot back up. But when you look at U.S. housing activity and home prices, you're starting to get again a little bit of a flat line. But we do see that bouncing and then continuing lower. When you start looking at pending home sales, pending home sales again had that little bit of a bounce. Now, month over month, negative 5.2% versus the expectation of 0.8, worst drop since September of 2022. But again, you're just going sideways. And eventually, you're going to see another level drop, and that's going to be kind of that washout. But it, the issue is going to be home prices because we don't see rates going down. Even if they cut rates slightly, you know, what does that mean? And, and again, we don't think they do, but even if they did, we're not going to see mortgage prices collapse, rates collapse, and create something. Instead, it's going to be a pressure point. U.S. new uh, one-family home sold. March new home sales came in at 9.6% versus the estimate of negative 1.3. Strongest month since August 2022. In level terms, sales now up 26% from the recent trough. February, uh, uh, the core logic. Uh, with 20 city homes prices came in at positive 0.35% year on year versus the estimate of negative 0.1. Overall U.S. home price index came in at 2.5% year on uh, up 2.5 2.05% year on year versus the 3.75% prior. Rates for both indexes hovering near the slowest in a decade, but still positive. So you're still getting again that last piece of of inf- kind of sticky inflation that's still there. And remember, it takes about a year for all of this housing stuff to kind of filter into the CPI. And, and yes, it slowed. We, we, we said it was going to slow. The rate of change was going to drop, but it's not negative. And, and that's where, we, again, we, we still see home prices dropping back to what we said. And you're seeing some of the conflicting ba- uh, back and forth. And it's always about timing. It's always about when this data was, was clipped. February um, F, uh, FHFA home prices came in at positive 0.5 versus the estimate of negative 0.1. Second consecutive monthly uh, gain and strongest jump since May of 2022. And it, just comparing it again to Case Shiller. So again, you, you're, you don't go straight down. Even between 07 through 11, you had periods of, of pops. You had increases. but And as the number of homes fall... And because there's so many homes at a higher price, depending on what crosses could you know push you a little bit higher. But when you come back, which is why we use the chart at the very, very beginning, looking at underlying pending home sales, pending home sales is now negative. So you had what crossed if com- concluded, but now pending home sales. So again, looking forward based on MBA, uh, you know, mortgage applications, well below estimates, Pending home sales, well below estimates. So you're clearing some of this, but then as rates stay high, prices stay high, that's, you know, the leading indicators show a further drop. So that's what we have for you in the U.S. In the next segment, we're going to go into Europe, some of the things that are happening there, just to uh, round it out, uh, especially looking at services and some of that confidence in the European markets.